In this lesson, you're going to learn how to use the famous quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. So you're probably wondering what exactly is the quadratic formula and what does it do for us? Well, it allows us to solve equations in this form where it's a second degree equation. We call it quadratic equation. Notice everything is on one side of the equation. It's equal to zero and it's in that standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. Now what you want to pay attention to are these coefficients, these numbers that come in front of the variables, the a, b, and c, because that's what we're going to use in our quadratic formula. And what it allows us to do is it allows us to find out what value of x makes this equation equal to zero. Now graphically what that means is, it means if we have a parabola, we're able to find out where it crosses the x-axis. These are called the x-intercepts. They're also referred to as the zeros because that's where the value is equal to zero, the y-coordinate. So we're going to go through three examples, three different ones that are going to really help you to understand how to work with the quadratic formula and solve for these key x-intercept points. The first one, we've got 2x squared plus 5x minus 12 equals zero. So what we're going to do is we could solve this by factoring it or completing the square or graphing it and see where it cross, uh, crosses the x-axis. But sometimes when the numbers are a little bit more difficult, you might want to just jump in and use a quadratic formula. So first thing we want to do is identify our a value, our b value, and our c value, and make sure that you capture the sign, whether it's positive or negative, by looking just to the left or in front to see if it's positive or negative. Then what we can do is we can substitute it into this quadratic formula and that'll give us our x values. So here we can put in, uh, let's see, negative b. Negative b means like the opposite of b. It doesn't necessarily have to be negative. It's just gonna be the opposite of b, so the opposite of five, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's gonna be five squared, which is 25, minus four times a, which is two, times c, which is negative 12, all divided by this whole thing, two times a. So two times two in this case. So now what you wanna do is you wanna work from the inside out and you wanna simplify. So sometimes students get a little bit confused with all the positives and negatives. So make sure to be, uh, be careful with that. Let's take it step by step here. So we have four times two is eight. Eight times negative 12 is negative 96. So now we have 25 minus negative 96, so that's like 25 plus 96, and that gives us how much? 121. So now we have negative five plus or minus the square root of 121 divided by four. Square root of 121 we know is 11. So now look what we have. We have two problems to solve. We have negative five plus 11 all divided by four and negative five minus 11 all divided by four. Let's do the plus one first. So negative five plus 11 is six divided by four, that's three over two, and negative five minus 11, that's negative 16, divided by four, which is negative four. Now, what does that tell us? It tells us that this parabola, this quadratic here, is crossing the x-axis at three halves, which is like one and a half, and at negative four, like that. And we know that A is positive, so we know this graph's gonna be opening up, so it's gonna look something like that. But the main point is to find those x-intercepts, those zeros, and we did that by using the quadratic formula. Let's look at another example. Okay, for number two now, we've got four x squared minus four x equals negative one. How would we solve this one by using the quadratic formula? Well, the first thing you might notice is this doesn't equal zero. So what we wanna do is we wanna get everything on one side of the equation and set it equal to zero. So to do that, I'm just gonna add one to both sides. So that gives us 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Now it's in that standard form, and we can identify our a value, our b value, and our c value, making sure to capture whether it's positive or negative. All we have to do now is substitute it in the quadratic formula, and this is where, you know, oftentimes students have a little bit of trouble, and the, the only trouble is really memorizing that quadratic formula. So at the end of this video, I'm going to make a put a link to another video, uh, not by me, but by another creator that you know has a song. You know, a lot of times students like to use music to kind of help remember uh, this quadratic formula. So I'll link to that at the end and I'll also put it in the description. But here what we want to do is we want to identify our a value, b value, and c value and substitute. So we have x equals the opposite. See negative b is the opposite of b, so the opposite of negative 4 is going to be positive 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared, that's negative 4 times negative 4, or 16, minus 4 
times a which is 4 times c which is positive 1 all divided by 2 times a which is 2 times 4. Now again you want to start from the inside and work your way out. 4 times 4 is 16 times 1 is 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. So now we have 4 plus or minus the square root of 0 all divided by 8. Of course the square root of 0 is really just 0. So this simplifies down to 4 plus or minus 0 divided by 8. 4 plus 0 is 4. 4 minus 0 is 4. So either way we're getting the same thing for the numerator 4 divided by 8 which is 1 half. So in this case we only got one solution and what this means graphically is say this is 1. It's crossing right here at 1 half. The a value is positive so we know it's opening up. And so in this case what we have is we only have one x-intercept. And we're going to talk a little bit about this more in my video on the discriminant where you can tell whether you're going to have one solution where it crosses at one point or two solutions or no real solutions. So you can check out that video if you're interested. But in this case we just had one real solution and that solution is one half. So one more example to illustrate this concept. Okay, before we jump into number three, if you're new to the channel and we haven't yet met yet, my name is Mario of Mario's Math Tutoring and I'm a full-time math tutor. I tutor students every day. And what I like to do on this channel is take what I learn about helping students and what works the best to help students you know, learn these different concepts and I try to distill it down and make it easier to understand for you in these videos. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, you know, check out my channel. It's all about making learning math less stressful so you can raise your grade, pass your class, and go on to pursue your dreams. So let's jump into number three. We've got negative 2x squared equals negative 8x plus 9. So what do you think the first thing we should do is on this problem? Well, if you said get everything on one side of the equation and set it equal to zero, you're absolutely right. And it doesn't really matter what side you get it on as long as it's all on one side. So in this case, I'm just going to get everything on the left by adding 8x to both sides and subtracting 9 from both sides. Okay, so these cancel. That's going to give us zero on the right. And we have on the left negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 9. Now if you want, because this is a leading coefficient of negative 2, we could multiply everything through by negative 1. This way the signs will actually uh, flip. Just to make it a little bit neater if you want. Doesn't matter. Either way you're going to get the same result. So now we want to identify our a value, which is 2, our b value, which is negative 8, and our c value, which is 9. And remember you want to put it in descending order from x squared, x to the first, and then the constant. So it goes down in degree. So we can identify our a, b, and c now. And uh, let's see what we've got here. Let's go ahead and put it into the quadratic formula. We have x equals the opposite of b, so the opposite of negative 8 is positive 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's negative 8 times negative 8, which is 64, minus 4, times a which is 2 times c which is 9 all divided by 2 times a which is 2. Now I like to start from the inside and work my way out. So I start with what's underneath the square root. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 9 is 72. 64 minus 72 is how much? That's going to be uh, negative 8. And we have 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 all over 4. Now you might be saying, Mario, how do you take the square root of negative 8? What number times itself is a negative number? Well, this is actually going to give us an imaginary number, but for the purposes of this video, this is going to be what we call no real solution. And if you were to graph this parabola, what's going to happen is it's going to look something like this or like this, where it, you know, it doesn't cross the x-axis, and so that's why you're not having any real solutions. There's not going to be any x value that's going to make the y value equal to zero. So in this case, no real solution and you got it. So go ahead and follow uh, to that video right there. If you want to learn a song, a rhyme, kind of a way of memorizing this important quadratic formula, a lot of students find it helpful. You may too. Uh, go ahead and check out that video and I'll look forward to helping you in the future ones.